Welcome back everybody. You know, I wanted to do this comparison with my 4720, but it serves a purpose with the 1025R. We're gonna do a little mowing today. Do a little comparing between a flail mower and a brush hog. There's some other great comparisons out there as well. A Ritter bit will do. I think Tractor Mike, Messix have all done some pretty good overviews. So I wanna give you my perspective on the comparison and help you make a better, more informed decision and give you a little bit more ammunition on which way you should go. Hey, and let's have some fun. This channel's all about learning. I know a little bit, you guys know a lot. So let's help each other. Do you have a favorite between these two, a flail mower or a brush hog? Do you have an opinion one way or another? Leave a comment down below with something helpful that you can help somebody else with that go a long way. We are proudly sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. I have a set of two inch spacers on my 1025R. If you're using a rotary mower, you're gonna be going over rough, bumpy terrain. So having a little bit more stability side to side could really help you out and make you feel more stable when you have a big old hunk of steel hanging off the back. Check out the link down below. Hey, and if you enjoyed this video, you found it helpful, it would mean a lot. It'd help the video perform if you would hit that thumbs up button down below. If you wanna see more tractor videos, hit that subscribe button. And if you want something for your tractor, a flail mower, a brush hog, or anything else, check out goodworkstractors.com. I wanna give you a few key comparisons for me if I were considering this. So I think it's important to you. Uh, the number one is gonna be cost because a flail mower is gonna literally almost be double the price or right about there of what you can get a brush hog for. So that is a substantial difference there and gonna be one of the biggest considerations that you guys are gonna to have to make a decision on. So with that in mind, a wide blade finish mower is gonna be more multi-purpose than a brush hog. You know, this is, everybody knows this is a rough cut mower. You're not looking to get a fine manicured lawn with this, but there's a lot of folks out there that actually use flail mowers with wide blades to maintain their lawn. You can cut it, it's gonna do that good of a job, that consistent of a job, knock down all the stems that you see here and after you get it in control, it's gonna look really nice. Whereas with a brush hog, that's not the intent. It's just to knock it down, get it to four or six or eight inches, whatever you want, and away you go, you come back a couple months later, this could be used on a weekly basis. So until I actually used a flail mower, I didn't think I didn't like a brush hog, <laughs> if that makes sense. However, once I started using a flail mower and had an opportunity, which last year uh, was the first time that I was able to start using one, I really didn't want to go back to a brush hog. And really for me, that's for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is I like how compact it is, how much closer it sits to the machine versus a brush hog that is three or four foot longer, you know, all the way out to the tail end there with the, uh, the trailing wheel. This just kind of sits closer and that's gonna help you feel more comfortable as an operator because the further out the weight is, anytime there's any kind of swing or sway involved, it's gonna compound it that much more. And you're gonna feel that in the operator seat, kind of getting bumped around and, and kind of having a jarring experience. So having that weight closer makes a big difference. So along that same line, if it's gonna be shorter, not sticking out as far, that means it's just more compact overall. And that's gonna be beneficial in a couple different scenarios. Number one for storage, it won't take up nearly as much space, whether you're trying to store it in your garage or a shed or under an awning, or if you're just storing it outside. And also if you're gonna be trailering this, because you throw this brush hog on the back of a 1025R and you're at essentially 20 foot. So if you're saving three or four foot of space with the flail mower, you're going from a 20 foot trailer down to a 16 foot. So that could be a big consideration if you're trailer shopping. So the position of your rear attachment, think about that rotary cutter sitting all the way out here, that extra three or four foot further out is why there's a limitation on the size. It's not that the PTO can't handle a larger, a 60 inch wide rotary cutter. You see there's a 60 inch wide flail mower on here right now that I've been using uh, all year. It has to do with where that weight is positioned because if you have weight way out further away from the three point hitch, the tractor simply doesn't have the ability or the capacity to be able to lift that weight up on a 60 inch cutter. But on the 60 inch flail mower being closer to the three point hitch, it's able to do that and do it well. So in this case here, you can cut 25% more five foot in one pass compared to four foot with a brush hog. And depending on the project that you have at hand, that can make a huge time difference. So two is I love the ability to be able to offset. And we've shown that in a lot of other videos, but with a brush hog, there's no moving that thing around. It's just centered right behind your tractor and that's what you have. With a flail mower, these funny tops that are offset and some of the larger ones that we carry as well, you can side shift it over, have it go all the way over to the side this way, even bring it back a little bit to uh, the other side or keep it just centered right behind your machine. So if you're doing along fence rows or uh, the edges of fields where 
you don't want your machine hitting every single branch. You might still hit some that are um, coming out, but you can sneak that mower over a little bit closer to the edge of the field or the fence row and clean up everything without feeling like you're right in it yourself. So let's talk about cutting ability, all right? So with a brush hog, you don't really have multiple blade or knife or cutting options, right? You just have your, your blades that are on here and that's just what it is. On the flail mowers, you do have to make an additional decision because you're gonna get either Y blades or hammer blades. And you need to make that decision based on what your primary purpose or application is gonna be uh, with the flail mower. So let's just take this property for example. This is uh, our new property that we have out here. The fields that are here have been unmaintained for years and years and years and it's surprising actually that there's not even more overgrowth we've gone through and cleaned out some huge autumn olive and other shrubs but now we're just left with the weeds and everything that's left over ideally i would have hammer blades out here for this first cut this first application and then i would follow it up and want y blades after that because we're going to maintain it right so it can be a bit of a which way do i go you can get both sets of blades they're completely interchangeable so you can buy a whole extra set of blades if you want to and switch from y blades to hammer blades or vice versa hammer blades are going to as the name suggests hammer through you know they're going to plow through that that thicker stemmier woodier material like shrubs and and just heavy debris whereas y blades are going to be for more grasses and weeds and typically do a lot better with that and also leave a finer finished result but the mower i've been using has y blades on it so we're going to roll with it we're going to use that today so we're going to go ahead here in just a minute and show you a few passes with each one the flail mower and the brush hog we'll take a look at the results see how fast we can get it done but let's give a little bit more detail about the dirt dog lineup and uh, these are the rc 100 series they're going to come in a four five and six foot width you can get them we're ordering them in a lot of john deere green you can get them in orange and some other colors too so if you can plan ahead if you want you know yellow or or blue or red give us a few months because lead times are long at the moment in 2021 and so you're going to be able to get these with a shear bolt or a slip clutch we ordered everything with a shear bolt you know my opinion on that debate there shear bolt versus slip clutch is go with the shear bolt if you're going to be mowing the same property over and over because maybe the first time you mow it there could be something hidden that you didn't see a stump or a rock or some obstruction and yeah maybe you're going to shear a bolt and have to replace it but after that like this field for example where i'm going to hopefully mow it for years and years i'm going to know what's there and i'm not going to let it get out of control it's just going to be mowing grass and and weeds periodically several times throughout the summer and I don't think there's a big benefit to paying extra hundreds of dollars of extra cost just to have that slip clutch but on the flip side of that if you are going to be mowing a lot of different areas or new properties maybe you're doing it as a side gig it could be beneficial to get that slip clutch because you're going to come into a lot of new unknown uncharted territories on a more regular basis where a lot of downtime with replacing shear bolts could be a pain in the butt when having that slip clutch on there to avoid all that hassle could save the day. Now I've been selling MK Martin products for a long time and they make some really good rotary cutters as well. One of the reasons I wanted to get the Dirt Dog line in though was because they are a made in USA manufacturer and this unit in particular is going to be made in the US with US and imported parts. Uh, they're getting the gearboxes uh, from overseas which is pretty common but the majority of the rest of the construction the materials are coming right from here in the u.s and so supporting the homegrown is pretty cool and so the flail mowers are not made in the usa but they're not made in china either these are actually coming out of italy so they take a while we already placed our order for next spring so as we get closer to that season you'll want to get your name on the list because once they're gone they're gone it was july when we placed our order and that was to have them next april or may a lot could change by then they could come in earlier or later but uh, we ordered over 100 of them just get your name on that list if you do want to have one you know i think dirt dog's website summed it up pretty nicely saying you know a brush cutter is a brush cutter right but it's not you know they had to do something to differentiate themselves from the competition and they added some in my opinion pretty thoughtful and creative features to take what's kind of a basic piece of equipment and put more value in it number one is going to have and it's kind of hard to see but it's got a, a slightly domed deck and the reason that's beneficial if you've been brush hogging for any period of time or leaving your stuff sit outside too is water wants to pool and collect and so it's going to allow that to just kind of run off and have fewer places for it to sit there and pull up and, and rust and corrode and it's also going to have along the edges the top deck is going to just run over the edge just a little bit instead of having a weld seam along there again to let water or debris pile up it's going to just allow it to slide off a lot more easily and keep it nice and clean on top 
Another nice touch that you don't see a whole lot on uh, more of the economy or the lower end cutters are going to be a bolted on skid runner. A lot of them are just going to have a welded on plate and once you wear it out, you wear it out. But this one is actually going to be replaceable. So that's not something you see too often and it's pretty nice to have that included on a cutter at this price point. Another pretty cool feature is going to be this pivoting A-frame, and you'll see this extra little hunk of steel that's down here. That's going to be the pivot point that allows it to give motion forward and backwards. So if you're traveling over uneven terrain, as you have this in the down position, if, that, uh, if you start to go up a hill, perhaps, and you have the trailing tailwheel there, this is going to actually give and push back a little bit and allow you to contour to the, to the terrain and the changing conditions uh, without feeling it's going to bind up or pinch against the back of the tractor in the three-point Again, it's not like it's a huge, holy cow, I can't believe that's on there feature, but if you start to take a look at all the little thoughtful little differences, they start to really add up. And being a very competitive price with everything else out there, you can see why I felt like it was a better value than a lot of the competition. A few other features to round this one out. You're going to have a segmented or laminated tailwheel, so there's no air. It's not pneumatic, nothing to go flat on there. These are a staple that have been around for years and years. You're going to have a single beam tailwheel design. You'll see the different bolt pattern here, so you can adjust this up or down if you want to have a certain minimum or maximum cutting height. Uh, it's also going to be Category 1 quick hitch compatible or just regular old three-point compatible if you want. And you're going to come with rubber guards on the front and steel guards on the back. The body of this cutter is going to be made from 10 gauge steel. It's going to have a 60 horsepower rated gearbox on there. How often do you see a four foot cutter that's overbuilt like that with a gearbox up to 60 horsepower? That's pretty sweet. And the entire series, the four, five, six foot, will cut up to one and a half inch thick material. All right, I think that's pretty much covered everything I wanted to tell you. I'm sure I forgot something, but we'll have a full list of features and specs on the website, goodworkstractors.com. Now it's time to get to cutting.
right, what did I learn? Two passes with the flail, two passes with the brush hog. Number one, let's talk about the time. First, there was a big time difference. Five foot flail mower, down and back took 11 and a half minutes. Four foot brush hog, down and back took eight minutes. Overall, you're cutting two foot less with the brush hog versus the flail mower. For me, I felt like I was making almost no progress with a four foot brush hog on a field this size. If you had a small acreage uh, situation, you'd probably be okay. But out here, I felt like I was spinning my wheels almost with the four foot. The, the five foot, even though not being that much bigger, felt a little bit better. However, just to be clear, as soon as the 4720 is back out of the shop, we're gonna hook up the 10 foot bat wing and knock out the rest of this field. So it probably doesn't show up too well in the video, but there's just a different style of cut. You're on a drum, going around and around with the flail. So I think the hammers would have done better. You can see uh, different stems or stalks that were left that didn't quite get cut with the Ys. Not terrible, but you can just see them interspersed throughout. But what it did cut, it cut a lot finer. So the rotary mower is just spinning around this way. So uh, parallel with the ground and it's kind of just slashing away at the material. So it cuts differently. I feel like as far as a rough cut goes, it was more consistent. Um, Again, if I had the hammer blades, that probably would have been a better comparison, but it left longer debris. It doesn't look as finished, I guess is the best term for it. I don't know if one is right or wrong, but I'm just trying to give you a little bit of a, you know, in the field assessment. Another consideration, you might be able to see them, but uh, kind of the different colored green lines going down are windrows. So brush hogs are gonna tend to leave windrows. So a windrow is essentially a small pile of the cut debris that just kind of piles up in a row as you're mowing along. And that's not noticeable in any way with the flail mower. And finally, I was cutting pretty low with the brush hog. Uh, flail mowers don't cut all that high. I think the funny tops, actually we've got to revise that they were rated to cut four inches but I think they can really cut more like three inches tall. You adjust the cut height with uh, your top link, adjusting that and you know, three inches is nominal if you're measuring on a hard surface, but when you're out here, it does tend to cut more like four inches, but on a brush hog, you can cut up to, well, as high as your three point can raise and down to two inches. So I had it riding pretty low just to kind of give an apples to apples as far as the amount of debris that was getting cut at the same time. And just a quick note on how the cut height is actually managed while you're mowing along. On a flail mower, you have a big rear roller. And so that's gonna sit on the ground all the time. And really, as the contour changes, goes up and down, that roller is going up and down and controlling your cut height very precisely across the whole width. On a brush hog, you've got your rear trailing wheel and then your three point. And you raise and lower your three point hitch to go up and down and control the height to an extent, along with adjusting the position of that rear wheel. So everything in front of that rear wheel is not going to adjust instantaneously to terrain changes. And so if you have bumpiness left to right or small humps in the middle, before that rear gauge wheel can rise up to go over top of it, you could find yourself scalping the ground or just getting an uneven cut. Not that it matters a whole lot when you're doing rough cut out here in the field, but it's just a consideration to take into account. So this video wasn't really about having a winner and a loser. It was just helping you have a better visual, a better understanding of the pros and the cons, the strengths and the weaknesses of a flail mower and a rotary cutter or a slasher, brush hog, bush hog, shredder, <laughs> whatever you want to call it in your neck of the woods. Well, if you found this video to be enjoyable or helpful, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. If you learned something or you have something to add, maybe you've used both or one or the other, you have your own addition to make to the video, leave a comment down below. Hit that subscribe button to see more videos. And if you want something for your tractor, check out goodworkstractors.com. Hey, well, thanks again for stopping by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.